ang napindot ko pala ay stop recording. So, nag-start ulit. Ay, nako. Nakapakiramdam pa din. So, anyway, keep safe. Ano, inam na raming tubig. Kasi kung dinerecho ko kanina, pinahinga ko muna. No? Ano, baka ma mapapagod lang ako hanggang sa sunod sa third section. Baka hindi ko na siya madiscuss ng ayos kasi pause na ako. So, anyway, makikita nyo equal both sides. So, proper yung accuracy ng debit at credits, yun nga lang. Double check for any error, any possible errors. Contra accounts. Contra accounts, yan yung mga, ang normal balances nila is yung opposite ng normal balances ng mga accounts na kakambal nila. And we have here uh, allowance for that full accounts or uncollectible accounts or bad debts. Ang kanyang normal balance is credit. Ang kinikredit niya ay ang accounts receivable. Sa so number 2, accumulated depreciation. Ang contra account niya ay uh, contra account siya ng PPE. No. Pero, hindi kasama ang land kasi ang land will never depreciate. It always appreciate. So, nagde-depreciate siya, pero sobra-sobrang bihira. Bawa, yung lupa mo naguhuna, o kinain ng tubig kasi malapit sa ilog, o di wala na yung lupa mo. Parang nag-ilog na siya, ano ba magagawa mo doon, di ka makapagtayo. So, may mga ganong instances, pero that is so, so, so very very ano uh, hindi masyadong nangyayari kaya ang nakalagay minsan is nev it will never depreciate hindi rin siya din depreciate kasi wala namang hindi na estimate yung useful life ng land so paano mo magde-depreciate kung wala ka est est estimated useful life Depreciation is the reduction in value of an asset with the passage of time due to the particular, partic in particular to wear and tear. So, sa definition pala ng, de 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 ano daw? Sa definition pala ng depreciation, ang kailangan mo dyan to compute it is the value ng asset kung magkano mo siya nabili, at passage of time, kung ano ba yung estimated year or period mo siya estimated magagamit. Now, sa withdrawal or drawing, okay, contra equity din ito. Ito yung isa sa, isa sa mga tinama natin na sagot kasi nalagay ko siya as, uh, ano ba itong nilagay ko dito? Expense ba? So, o equity. So, dapat ito ay contra equity. Kasi nasa equity siya, na dapat ay cre credit yung normal, yan, napapakas na, credit yung normal balance, pero, nandun siya as deduction sa equity, sa capital pala. Na debit balance, ang normal balance niya. Step 5, preparation of worksheet including adjusting entries. Yung worksheet na, di ba? Ito, meron ka na ditong trial balance. Ang worksheet is dudugtungan mo na yung mga trial balance na yan. Parang hahaba na. Now, the aim of this step 5 is to verify accuracy of accounting information and adjust necessary accounts to provide an up-to-date financial reports. So, sa, sa uh, definition, what is a worksheet? A worksheet is a multiple column device or a computer spreadsheet used to easy preparation, used for easy preparation of the financial statements done in a systematic process. All necessary accounting information are properly presented and structured in the worksheet. Preparation is being done in the end of the accounting period prior to the preparation of financial statements. Necessary adjusting entries are also reflected in the worksheet. 
So, hanapin naman natin is accounting worksheet. Lumalabas agad yung worksheet. So, yan yung worksheet. Um, ito, na makikita nyo dito, meron tayo dito ang una, un, unadjusted trial balance, open in new tab. Uh, parang napakita ko na tayo sa inyo ito dati. Unadjusted, ito yung una nating pinakita sa step 4. Step, step 4 nga, step 4. Tapos, adjusting journal entries, ito yung adjustments. E, para ipakita yung other uh, other transactions na affected ng accrual basis of accounting. And then, adjusted trial balance. Tapos, i-extract mo na yung income statement para i-close mo siya sa equity. And may extract mo yung balance sheet. Ano pa bang ibang itsura? So, ito halos ganun lang din. No? Nakikita nyo sa baba, nandito yung net loss. Walang pinakita dyang income summary account. Kasi diniretso nila ng income tsaka balance sheet. Hindi na sila nag-closing entries. Pero yung closing entries naman, is nire-record pa din siya. Yun nga lang, for the sake na hindi ganun kahaba yung worksheet nyo na meron dito closing entries, trial balance after closing entries, Uh, tapos income statement sa pa yung balance sheet diba? ang dami so pwede din ang ganyan pero ang gagamitin natin is kung ano yung instruction sa module at sa book okay uh -huh. The worksheet. So, dito ang nakalagay ay, ah, ganun din pala, wala siyang income summary account. Nakalagay lang sa baba, magkano ba yung net profit? Ay, sorry. Lamesa yun. Net profit. Yan yung itsura, although, utay-utay natin yung paggamit niyan, depende sa transaction, tapos magsasagot tayo, hanggang sa matapos natin, makagawa tayo ng financial statement. So, i-familiarize nyo yung sarili nyo dyan. Nakikita nyo meron tayong trial balance, adjustment, adjusted trial balance, income statement, tapos balance sheet. Sa computation, nauuna ang income statement kasi ikuklose mo muna yung mga accounts dyan. Pero sa presentation ng, bal ng financial statement, una ang balance sheet kasi nandyan yung mga real accounts sa kasusunod yung income statement. So, for presentation purposes, una ang balance sheet. Pero, for computation purposes, una mo kukomputin ang nasa income statement. Adjusting entries. The adjusting, the, in adjusting the accounts, there are important dates to take into consideration. The date of transaction or the journal entry date and the end accounting period of the business for accurate computation of the amount to be adjusted. Kasi dyan mo kukuhunin alin ba yung used at unused. Alin ba yung incurred tsaka unincurred, unincurred. Or yung earned tsaka unearned. Diba? I assume yung mga accrual. Bakit kailangan ng adjustments? This will bring the asset, liability, revenue, and expenses up to date at the end of the accounting period. Halimbawa, yun nga sa salary, hindi mo na record, e nalaman mo na lang nung katapusan na hindi pala naibayad nung client, nung iyong staff, kasi absent si employee. So, hindi siya na-cash out. Hence, ano pa din siya? Payable. So, nadagdagan pa yung payable mo, nag-adjust ka. Or yung depreciation mo, at the end of the period, at the end of the year, hindi nakapag-record ng depreciation kasi nga, uh, hindi siya, wala, walang source document agad do doon kasi more on uh, arithmetic siya, eh, kinocompute siya. So, i-adjust mo. I-gagawa ka ng adjusting entry para sa depreciation. Or nag-assume ka na meron kang... Uh, nung nag-assess ka, merong allowance for bad debt accounts, di ba? Adjust mo din. Okay. 
adjusting entries can never be equated to correcting entries because the journal entry made before adjustment is correct. Bapat bago tayo makapag-adjust is correct na. Only at the end of the accounting period, the balances may have been affected because of the happening of the sum of some events, thus the need for adjustments. In correcting entry, there is an assumption that error has already been committed in the time of journalizing. So, mauuna muna ang correcting entry bago ka mag-adjusting entry. Kasi bago ka mag-adjust, you are assuming or we are assuming that the financial statements, the financial statements, that the records in ledger and journals are correct. Uh, the need to provide timely and accurate information, the economic life of the business is subdivided into artificial period known as periodicity concept. The business need periodic reports to assets and the to assets to assess the financial condition of the entity and this is the best way to achieve that without going through the process of liquidation. It interacts with recognition and the recognition principles to underlie the use of accrual accounting. Adjusting entries assigned revenues to the period in which they are earned and expenses are assigned to the period in which they are incurred. Adjusting entries are needed to measure properly the profit, the profit for the period and to bring the related asset and liability accounts to correct balances for an accurate financial reporting purpose without adjusting entries the financial statements may not fairly show the like the liquidity and solvency of the business in the statement of financial position same with the profitability as reflected in the statement of income now what are the accounts for adjustments so again, ito yung meron kang adjustments kasi naka-accrual basis, basis tayo. It includes deferrals and accruals. Ang deferral is nauna yung movement ng pera kesa sa accrual. Okay? Deferral na una ang pera. <laughs> Deferral na una ang pera. Kasi tinan nyo, sa number 1, allocating to expense to reflect expenses incurred during the accounting period. Mm. Uh, number 2, allocating revenue received in advance to revenue to reflect revenues earned during the period. Mm. Sa deferral, it includes prepaid insurance expense. Nabayaran mo na. No? Tapos sa baba, yung mga deferred subscription, yung unearned revenue, di ba ibig sabihin ng unearned is, nabayaran ka na, pero hindi mo pa na-earn talaga, hindi pa talaga tapos yung obligation mo. Hindi mo pa siya considered as tapos na, na pera mo na talaga siya kasi may liability ka pa to render service. No? Basta sa deferral, nauna yung movement ng pera. Kung ikaw yung company, nauna mong nabayaran yung expense or nauna kang bayaran para sa service na i-render mo or sa goods na i-deliver mo. Ito, revenue already collected and expense already paid. Sa accrual, yan, edi kabalik tara ng deferral, nahuli ngayon ang pera. Sa accrual is nakapag-expense uh, ka na, na-accrual mo, na-incur mo na yung expense, tapos sa revenue na-earn mo na yung expense. So, yan yun. Tandaan nyo kapag deferral na una ang pera. Unless I'm wrong, chat me na lang. Pachat me sa GC. Pero, madali na yung tanda in tandaan. Defera. Defera. Na una ang pera. Deferral. Adjustments for deferrals. So, sa adjustment of deferrals, kasi na una mo siya na record as asset, na una mo na siya na bayaran ng buo, titingnan mo, kung ilang months, kung gaano katagal mo siya nagamit over sa period kung ilan, kung gaano katagal mo siya dapat gamitin. So, yung used versus unused, 
ibabangga mo sa magkano ba yun or ano bang gano ba katagal yung period na gagamitin mo yung prepaid asset na yun. So, sa example, September, ano yung parang nakakalito? September 1, 2018, nagbayad ng rent. Eh, nagtapos ikaw ng December 1, 2018. So, for far, dahil yun ay for one year rent, ang rent mo is from September 1, 2018 to August 31, 2019. But September 1, August 1, pwede. To August 31, 2019. So, since nabayaran mo siya nung September, na-accrue mo na yung one month, na-incur mo na yung one month nung September 30. Ang second month mo nung October 31. Third month mo nung November 30. Fourth month mo nung December 31. So, with that, 4 months na yung na-incur mo for that 120,000 worth of office rent na pang 1 year. So, yung 4 over 12, yan yung iyong magiging expense. Kasi yan yung na-incur mo na. Okay? So, makukuha mo yung 40,000. Ito ay... Um, under ng asset method. Kasi kaya siya asset method, nirecord mo muna siya ng asset. Nag-prepaid expense ka muna. So, under asset method, ang record mo is magde-declare ka na ngayon ng expense at babawasan mo ang prepaid mo. Pero kung expense method, since ang una mong nirecord ay expense, no? Excuse me. Una mong ni-record ay expense. Ang ni-record mo is rent expense, debit rent expense, credit cash. E eh, meron ka pang 8 months na hindi pa nagagamit. So, mag-establish ka ng prepaid rent expense at the end of the month. Kapag naka-expense method. Pero, ang ginagamit natin is asset method. Ang expense method is ginagamit siya sa cash basis para lang makita kung although na re na record mo yung buong expense, yung buong 120,000 na cash. Pero sa totoong buhay naman na cash out mo as expense, sa totoong buhay naman, meron ka pang 8 months na hindi mo pa talaga na expense. So, yun yun. So, asset method tayo. No, under sa asset method, kapag mag-journal uh, entry ka na, di na journal entry mo na pala, kapag magpo-post ka na, gagawa ka ng T-account sa dalawang account na affected ng transaction. So, meron kang prepaid expense at saka cash. Yan yung time na nagbayad ka. Tapos, sa December 31 at the end of the period, magbabawas ka ng rent expense. So, makikita mo, nag-establish ka ng rent expense. Tapos, yung prepaid rent expense mo, naging 80,000 na lang. Itong 80,000 na to is yung 8 months na hindi mo pa na-incur. Pero, nabayaran mo na. Okay. Kapag expense method, same lang yung method. Yun nga lang, pinapakita naman dito na at the end of December 31, 2018, ang rent expense mo lang talaga is 40,000. Okay? Tapos, ang prepaid rent mo is 80,000. So, kung ipagtutugma natin yung nasa taas, prepaid rent expense is prepaid rent expense is 80,000, magkaparehas lang. Rent expense is also 40,000 magkaparehas lang. Nagiba lang yung method ng recording pero both are acceptable. Dito lang sa ating topic, uh, sa ating course, we will use the asset method and the liability method mamaya yon. Supplies adjustment. <clears throat> Ngayon nag-purchase ka ng supplies amounting to 5,000 on credit, ibig sabihin utang mo. 
Tapos nung at the end of the period, after ka magbilang ng inventory mo, meron kang balance pa na 2,000. So, ibig sabihin, may natitira pa sa inventory mo na 2,000. So, yung 2,000 is your ending balance. So, sa analysis, ginamit na ginamit na ano ay supplies. So, hindi pala siya inventory. Inventory count yung tawag, pero supplies yung account. Sa so supplies, meron kang 5,000 na binayaran noon. Tapos, sa supplies na yun, yun o, excuse me. Sa supplies na yun, 2,000 yung natira. So, magkano yung nagamit mo? So, para sa math, kung meron kang 5,000 apple, 2,000 yung natira, ilang apple yung nagamit mo? So, 3,000. So, sa 3,000 na yon yun yung iyong supplies expense. Yan. Regardless na kung siya ay accounts payable or cash mo binayaran. Kasi, nirecord mo na siya as asset. Now, supplies expense, tapos bawasan mo siya sa asset mo na supplies. Tapos, di ba hindi na pinakita yung asset method or expense method kasi nga we are into asset method. Pag ni-record yan, so yan na, pinakita na ito. Dito. Tapos nagkaroon ka ng supplies expense. Unearned revenue. Ito yung binayaran ka na pero hindi mo pa na-render yung service o binayaran ka na pero hindi mo pa na-deliver yung goods. Pwede itong i-record uh, through liability method or income method. Pero dahil tayo ay gumagamit ng asset method, ang ating i-consider is the liability method. We will record the liability when we receive the cash. Sa income method kasi is we, sir, we are recording the income when we receive the cash. Kasi pumapasok siya dyan sa cash basis of accounting. Example ng unearned revenue, so yan, commission, nakolekta mo ng in advance, interest income, puro in advance, ibig sabihin, nauna ang pagbabayad sa'yo kaysa sa servisyong iyong i-render. Illustration na naka-receive ka ng 150,000 sa customer as rental payment. Ngayon, ikaw naman yung nagpapaupa. This 150,000 is good for 5 months. May sinabi na good for 5 months starting next month. So, aalamin mo ba magkano yung renta per van? No. Ang aalamin mo is magkano yung renta per month. So, per month meron kang 150 divided by 5 or 30,000. So, October 15 nag-start. Yan. October 15 nag-start. Ang libro natin is December 31, 2018 natapos. October, November. Okay. The company. Nakalagay pala yung the company uses calendar period. Kung calendar period we will use by month hindi siya yung um, day. Kasi kung sasabihin na ka-day, yung parang starting October 15, is specify naman. Okay, this transaction give right to liability uh, to provide customer A with the needed advance which will take effect on November 1, 2018. So, sinabi pa lang November 1, 2018 magte-take effect. So, nung November, 30,000 yung na, ano na, na-render mo na service. Nung December na ay 30,000. So, meron ka ng 60,000 worth of parenta ng van na nagawa na. Ang natitira na lang is 90,000. So, simply looking at this, this table, ibig sabihin ng iyong income, ang iyong service income ba? Service income or service revenue is 60,000. While lang iyong unearned income will become 
60,000 na mababawasan na kasi na-render mo na yung first two months. So, to record, di ba, sa liability method, nung una ni record mo siya as liability. Okay? So, kung mag adjust ka na, babawasan mo yung liability mo, dadagdagan mo yung income mo. Sa income method, dahil ni record mo siya as income, no, kapag nag-adjusting entry ka na, babawasan mo yung income mo. At magre-record ka ng unearned rent for the purpose of taking note magkano pa ba yung iyong babayaran or magkano pa ba yung iyong liability sa client. Although yung cash basis kanina, sabi ko hindi siya gumagamit ng mga accounts payable, accounts receivable, pero for the sake of presentation at the end of the period, para naman makita mo na meron ka pang i-render na service. Okay, sa uh, ano naman, sa T-account, so, post nyo lang yan, posting lang, then you get the balance. Ito, provision for depreciation. The concept of depreciation applies to assets or resources of the business that are tangible and this, and its useful life extends beyond one year. Most assets subject to depreciation are those classified under property plan and equipment whose value continuously decreases as they are used in the day-to-day -day operation of the business. The precision is not applicable to land kasi ang land, hindi mo makukuha yung useful life niya. The value increases at the time passes past by. So, syempre, ano, yan ang isa sa magandang negosyo kung gusto mo nang stable or yung hindi nananakaw kasi Kung may pera ka, no, may pera ka, nagtago ka ng pera sa bahay mo, worth 200,000, ay eh, nagkanakawan. So, good buy, 200,000. Pero sa land, kung bibili ka ng land worth 200,000, siguro mga 10 years from now, magiging twice yung value mo, 400,000 or kahit 300,000, tataas yung value niyan. Kung magkanakawan man, makuha niya yung titulo ng lupa. It's just the paper. Pero naka-record sa na owner sa government sa Registry of Deeds is ikaw. Ikaw pa rin yung owner kahit man ako yung document. Yun nga lang, you will present evidences na nawala, na nawala yung document. Evidence. Wala pa. Hindi pala siya evidences. You will present evidence na nawala yung document. Okay. Depreciation. Yan na ano kanina. Yung reduction in value. Example ng common depreciable assets, so yung building, kasi syempre kapag may sarili kang office, meron kang account na building, or meron kang, uh, ayun yan, or may pinapaupahan, kahit ikaw mismo may pinapaupahan ka. Machinery, kasi nagpo-produce ka ng items. Now, furnitures and fixtures, yan yung nasa office mo, mga upuan, mga painting, mga table, um, ano pa ba? Sofa, yan. Um, if office equipment, lahat ng nasa office mo na disaksak, yun ang ano sa amin. Kapag equipment is kailangan ng kuryente. Or mechanical item siya. Hindi siya yung basta naka, naka ano lang dyan. Yung, yung parang furniture na naka-display lang, tapos ang purpose is more on comfort lang. Comfort assistance. Pero yung equipment yung ginagamit na sa operation. Pero hindi siya directly connected sa pag-create ng item, ng inventory. Also, store equipment, yung mga ginagamit sa tindahan, yung mismo tindahan ay mga cashier. Cashier. Entry ba ang tawag doon? Yung nag ng barcode, yan yan, store equipment. Important elements ng depreciation is yung acquisition cost. Ang acquisition cost is magkano mo siya nabili. Magkano yung historical cost niya. Ang salvage value is magkano yung estimated mong value ng iyong asset kung sakali mong ibenta siya after ng useful life niya. So, tinatawag dyan yan minsan na residual value. Um, residual value. Salvage value. Parang, magkano ba siya as scrap 
item na. Kasi kung 10 years mo siya magagamit, so after 10 years, magkano yung scrap value niya? Trade-in value din yan. Estimated useful life. Sa estimated useful life, magkano ba yung na, ilan bang period, gano katagal mo may estima, yung estima mo na magagamit mo yung item, yung PPE. Method of computation. Ito ay dinetail pala, pero mas detailed siya sa inyong second year, second sem. Hindi pala parang third year, first sem pa to. Yan. So, it's a value. Sa una is straight line method. Ang straight line, pinakamadali sa lahat. Tapos, sum of years digit, meron lang declining, double declining. Ang double declining is meron ka lang times 2 sa declining method. <laughs> Output method, retirement method, replacement method. Isa-isahin. Ayan pala, buti naman. We will consider straight line. Straight line tayo kasi yun yung pinakamadali. Kasi yan din yung normal gamitin sa mga small businesses. Sa straight line method, ang computation ng annual depreciation is yung cost divided by minus salvage value divided by estimated use for life. Yung entry ng depreciation, yung debit, the expense or the depreciation expense, dash, ano ba yung fixed asset niya, and then, you get the contra asset. Kasi you are not, you are not removing the fixed asset from the financial statement. You are just reducing its value to its net realizable value. Kaya meron kang contra asset na accumulated depreciation. Which will, uh, which ang normal balance is credit. Okay, other terms, ang depreciable cost is yung nasa ibabaw ng numerator. Eh, yung numerator pala mismo ito. Ito ay merong row dyan sa, merong row, meron dyan line sa baba, divided by. Cost minus salvage value is depreciable cost. Estim uh, accumulated depreciation is the sum of depreciation in direct relation with the, and with the expired life of the asset. Ibig sabihin, kasama yung depreciation cost from previous period na merong depreciation yung item na yun. Nasa book value, yan yung carrying value na tinatawag. Yung uh, cost minus accumulated depreciation. So, we have illustration here. Ang cost ng item is nine, uh, 95. Tapos may salvage value daw siya na 5,000. Ang useful life ay 6 year. So, 95 minus 5 divided by 6 equals 90. Since 6 ang useful life niya, ang kanyang depreciation um, will be 90 divided by 6. Nakalagay sa si statement na the computed depreciation cost of the asset in the ending account period and prepare the entry to adjust the records. Now, kung ang annual depreciation mo is 15,000, e tandaan natin na November 1 tayo nag-purchase. So, ang depreciation mo lang is from November 1 to November 30 and December 31 to December 1 to December 31, 2018. So, dalawang buwan lang over 12. Hence, ang gagawin mo is 15,000 divided by 12 months. Makukuha mo is 1 to 50. Multiply it by 2. Or, 5,000 times 2 months divided by 12 months. Makukuha mo rin is 2, 5. Ayan. Siguro hanggang dun muna part, part 2 na itong isa. Yun ang sa... Ano, Dahil. Sana. 
biglang nagbiga. Hindi na siguro na sama ng pakiramdam. Yan, so 2-5. 2-5 ang yung depreciation expense. Computers. So, sunod na video ay uh, yung part 2 ng step step 5 pa to.